It all starts with this thought. We're all in the same business, essentially, and it doesn't really matter what you do or how you do it or what level in an organization you're at. We're all just trying to get some people to do something that we want them to do, which is kind of a nice leveling influence when you think about it. It's a nice leveler. doesn't matter who you're talking to, what size of organization you're in. We're all on the same boat. We're all waking up every morning just trying to get some people to do something, something we would like them to do. But here's the problem. People today, pretty hard to predict. You look at what's going on just in your industry around the increases in customization and personalization that people are demanding, the technological things that are happening that are making it much more difficult for you to do the jobs you've always done before. How much harder it is to find clients, retain clients, talk about staff, find staff, retain staff. People are far more complex and difficult than they were in the past. Let me give you a couple of concrete examples. Retired folks, they're not sitting in chairs and whittling on a stick like they used to and knitting and having a you know, chat with their friends. They're jumping out of airplanes. They're climbing Mount Kilimanjaro and having the times of their lives. They're not behaving like old people are supposed to behave. Now let's go to the other end of the spectrum. Let's look at Gen Z. You know what Gen Z's done? They've gone and discovered vinyl. They're buying Led Zeppelin. That's not what young people are supposed to be doing. The spa industry around the world, a trillion dollar industry on this planet. The spa industry, 50% of the revenue in the spa industry today is from men. That's not what men are supposed to do, go to the spa and have a mani and a pedi and a massage and hang out with their friends. The largest growth segment in the long haul trucking industry in terms of staff, women. It's the fastest growing segment of the long haul trucking industry employee workforce is women. It's not what women are supposed to be doing. So the point is, if we continue to look at people in these ways that are about their demographic, and we keep expecting people to behave in a certain way because they're male, they're female, they're rich, they're poor, they're young, they're old, they're black, they're white, they're gay, they're straight, married, single, number of kids, all those old typical labels, we're gonna to continue to have problems understanding who people are because it all becomes perfectly clear and perfectly easy to understand the moment we discard those labels and start looking at who people are on the inside, what drives us to do the things that we do all day long? Liking good music isn't about how old you are, it's about a certain set of values that you have. What career you choose to follow that has nothing to do with any of those demographic labels. It has everything to do with whether that career is satisfying for you, whether your values are in alignment with what that career is all about. So my story for you today is that we need to get past these old fashioned ways of thinking about people and start thinking about people based on what's on the inside. Three friends are out having a few drinks, haven't seen each other for a long time, probably since last year's conference. So they're having a few drinks. They probably had one drink too many, maybe two drinks, maybe even three drinks too many. And the smart one in the group puts up a hand and says, you know what, I think we better call it. We got that speaker in the morning and the vice president isn't gonna be happy if we show up and we're hung over and the margarita machine was fantastic, but it's time for us to go. We gotta get out of here. So they're walking down the street, they're having a good time. And you know what happens when you're with your friends and you've had a few too many drinks and it's late at night and you go outside and suddenly your voices get a little louder and you start telling jokes, you think you're hilarious, you're punching each other in the shoulder and you're being noisy and raucous and then you turn a corner. And suddenly for these three friends, there's a dark alley. And they have to decide what they're gonna do. Now the first friend, the only thing we know about the first friend is their primary value in life is adventure. Going down that dark alley sounds like the best thing they've ever thought of. Why, this has been put here for us. What a great way to end the evening. Let's go down that dark alley and see what happens. Come on, guys, this is gonna be great. Friend number two, the only thing we know for certain is that their primary value in life is safety. 
why would we go down that dark alley? Oh my gosh, this has been put here to test us. Let's go back to the bar. Let's, let's turn on the lights. We may even need to call the police. Whatever we do, let's not go down that dark alley. We're a little bit drunk. I love you guys. Why would we do that? And friend number three, the only thing we know for certain is their primary value in life is friendship. I don't care if we go down the dark alley. I don't care if we go back to the bar. I don't care what we do as long as we stick together because I love you guys. That's what matters. We're friends. Let's stick together. A lot of you guys are a little bit drunk. So the moral of the story is we didn't need to understand anything else about those three individuals when it came time to understand how they're going to make a decision. We didn't need to know what their demographics were. We didn't need to know if they were 18 to 24 year old males who make $75,000 a year and have a white collar job. None of them did either. In order to decide what they were going to do, not one of them stopped and said, gee, what are my demographics? I think I should react this way according to my demographic profile. And yet we all sit in our organizations and we look at people that we're trying to understand and influence like clients and prospects and even coworkers and staff and folks that we deal with at all the other organizations that we end up dealing with. And we sit down and we say, well, what do we know about them? And we look at their demographics as if that's going to help us, as if there's some kind of magic tea leaves that we can read and it'll help us understand what people are going to do. And remember, what we're all here to do is try and get some people to do something we want them to do. So demographics are not going to help us. It's values that tell us how people make decisions. 